He will take where Jesus says, I don't condemn you too. But Jesus told her, sin no more. So you can be the selective person, you can be the hypocrite, you can be the liar, you can be the one who is fooling himself. Because at the end of the day, if you try to manipulate the verses, try to make them as a source of sin, a reason for sin, you're just fooling yourself. Because the whole Bible is about be holy like your father, not be filthy like Allah. So anything will make you go out of the line of being holy is absolutely will take you to hell. So you do not need really lawyers to explain to you and judges. Anything, anything will make you go away from the way of holiness. That is hell. You do not need a priest to explain to you. You do not need a judge. You do not need a lawyer. You do not need a philosopher. You know what is sin. But you close your eyes when you want. And you accept what you like. And then you justify it. And me, myself, I go through those stages too. Don't think it's only you. So I say to myself, oh, you know, I'm weak. Okay, uh, tomorrow I will not do this no more. Ah, uh, you know, we are human, you know. Uh, we, uh, you know, what we can do. You know, we wish to have things is not ours. It's normal. Uh, you know, we get tempted, you know, sexually. You know, beautiful women, look at those women, they are beautiful. Is it possible for a man to see a beautiful woman and he don't get tempted? I can give myself all the excuses. There's a huge difference between being tempted and doing the thing. A huge difference. To be tempted is very normal. To fail into temptation is a different story. So you will be tempted by money, by sex, by power, by wealth, by buy, buy, buy. You know, like now, uh, YouTube, and I don't know even why, suddenly I notice that in YouTube, it says that uh, you are qualified to activate uh, Super Chat and uh, ads on whatever they call it, like for advertising. YouTube is tempting me. I can make money right now. Right now, I just click one bomb from YouTube. I have two accounts. This one have 144,000. The other one have, I don't know, 100,000 something. I can make good money. People, they can put donation here. But I know there are some people, they don't even come to YouTube unless there is a donation in their channel. If YouTube take, YouTube take the donation, they stop coming totally. They try to find different platform. I don't want the money of YouTube because now I feel better. I am here, not because there's a commercial plane and not because there's people, they are giving donation. I'm here because I want to be here talking to people. Always the devil try to tempt you. So either you will become the same as the rest. Everybody serving God by taking money. But they can serve God without taking the money. And if you post a donation, then you will notice that your message in the top. And then I will choose you because you pay me money. Oh, this guy, he say, suddenly you are important because you paid money. The rest are not important. Do they pay money? No. This is the truth. All channels, they do that. They put your... You know, if you want the admin, the, the, or the owner of the channel to notice you, uh, give him a tip. Suddenly your question is there, and then your donation is up, and now you are the man. So always temptation is going to come. Even though you don't seek it, it will come to you. And me, myself, I struggle a lot with a lot of things try to tempt me. I don't want to, you know, 
talk about what some people do. I go on Skype, I see people sending me pictures, women changing their profile picture every two minutes, texting me, they insist they want to talk to me in private, they cannot call. All of this is a form of temptation. Even though maybe they are good, maybe they are not bad. But temptation always is there. Either you surrender and you stay strong or you will fail. How many preachers and how many decent men they fail because of temptation? I'm not a preacher, by the way. I'm not a priest. I'm not a bishop. I'm just like you. But is it true? There's many men who supposedly serving God, they fail horribly because of temptation. Is it true? They lost even their family, their future, their career, their reputation, everything for just a stupid temptation. And the devil, he will never stop trying to tempt you. And the more you resist, the more he gives you more temptation. The more he makes things look so nicer, easier, easy, it's coming to you just to grab it. So either you surrender to the devil, or you say to yourself, sin no more. The second the devil try to tempt you, you always should remember from John 8, go and sin no more. Don't remember only when Jesus says, I don't condemn you. Remember that he said, go and sin. This is why I ask you, what do you, what do you think? Which one is the heart of this chapter? Most of you agree with me that about if you don't, if you have no sin, cast your first stone. But the fact, the heart of the chapter is go and sin no more. You live, you enjoy life. Life without sin is way more joyful. Sin never make you happy. I don't talk about my life. I don't talk about my private life. But I will go through things like you do. I'm not coming from the sky with the cloud. I'm like you. You will never find joy with sin. Never. Sin make you rotten. Sin make you stinky. Sin make you hate yourself. Sin will bring depression. Sin will make you feel down. Sin will make you feel you are used and abused. Imagine you sleep with women every day. And then which one of them you love her? You love nobody and you never feel love no more. All of them, they call you babe. Which babe is you? And what kind of woman she will call you babe? Just she met you two minutes ago and she sleep with you today. How many babes she have before you? And how many babes she will have after you? And the same, the man, he meet the women, you know, right away, he suddenly, he like her, she is wonderful. I really, I, I, I really like everything about you. He said that to every single woman before you. And he will say that to a thousand women after you. A man who seek love, he don't commit sin. There's enmity between love and sin. They don't live together. A man who loves you, he married you. A man who want to use you, he sleep with you. Sin and love cannot be under one roof. If a man, he says to you, I love you, so why he don't want to marry you? What is missing? Maybe he love your body, but this is not love. I have nothing to do with love. He love everyone, buddy. So going back to the verse, we remember that maybe the heart of the story, which people always quote, that Jesus, he did not condemn the women, but 
people forgot that the blood of the story, which is in the heart, which is what is the heart for, is go and sin no more. So each time your heart is pumping blood, what about we say, go and sin no more, especially when temptation is strong, especially when temptation is coming to you and you do not know how to stop it. Temptation is powerful. But you can be way more stronger than temptation by just one sentence. You commit sin before, you learn that sin never make you happy. And I challenge anyone to say to me that sin make him happy. You will never find one. You will never. You live sin, you might feel temporarily joy, but then you will regret badly. You are a thief. Each time you hear the police car, you look around, you know, maybe they are coming to me. I sleep in my house. I don't care. Police car in front of my house, in the top of my roof. I, why, why will we worry? Why will we worry? Because I did not do anything wrong. And this is what happened to you when you do sin. You lose your comfort. You lose your trust of yourself and everything else because you don't meet people who they are good. You meet sinners like you. You live with sinners. You associate with sinners. And you do enjoy sin with them. But then you find that the only way to enjoy sin is not to trust anybody because they are sinners. They are liars. They are fornicators. They are cheaters. You sleep with married women. Can you trust a woman? She sleep around, she is married. You sleep with married men. Can you really trust a man that he will be good to you as a woman? He is already cheating his wife by sleeping with you. If he is good, he will not do it. A man, he don't respect his parents. Do you think he will respect you for being a parent? If he was good, he will never do so. This is why the Bible teaches us, from their fruits you shall know them. So the fruits is extremely important to examine things around us. A person who believes in sin no more, he will refuse sin. And it is a sin to be a cheater, to be a liar, to be a deceiver, to be a scammer, to be disrespectful for your parents. It's a sin to take what is not yours. Go and sin no more. So my friends, my family, I want to say to you, may the Lord bless you. I say to myself and to you, if you allow me, go and sin no more so we can live a better life and we can be qualified because you need a qualification even to apply for a stupid job you need a qualification. You have a limited, even to work in anything, even the post office. The first thing in the post office they want is a trust. If they cannot trust you with the mail, they will never hire you. But you, your job is really simple. Just take this letter, put it there in the mailbox. Even that one is based on trust, extreme trust. So if the post office need a trustworthy person, how entering about entering the house of God? What is the qualification? How you can be trustworthy to be qualified? The answer is very simple. Go and sin no more.